my weapon of choice for this project in terms of ID will be Visual Studio Code. I'll be using this powerful editor to write uh, in Java, in Python, and uh, in JavaScript. I, me personally, I find it very useful. It can, it can support pretty much every language out there. It's free, and whatever you need, you can uh, additionally install from here. But for our Java project, we will need the following things. Uh, you type here Java, so you install this pack. Uh, once you install this pack, it will ask you if you don't have already installed a JDK, Java Development Kit, on your machine. It will ask you to install it. So you will need to install uh, uh, at least JDK 11. It's, it's necessary for the ID itself. And also you will uh, you will need the Java 1.8, which is Java 8. So you install uh, from the the pop-up that you'll get here those two versions, and you'll be good to go. Mm. Also, it's useful to have uh, this is uh, initializer Spring initializer. It kind of duplicates start.spring.io, mm, but every time to go to this website, it's uh, I find it more convenient to to have access from within the ID. Uh, also, something very useful uh, in in IntelliJ, you you have uh, it have it built in, but here you need to install it additionally. It's Git Graph. And we will be using it. It's a very um, useful instrument. You, if you use IntelliJ, you are pretty much very familiar with this. Should be. Okay, so. Uh, uh, okay, let's assume we installed all those things. Let's. Uh, Let's create our Java project. Now, for that, we we go to View Command uh, Java Create Create Java Project. Uh, okay, Spring. It will be Spring Boot Project. We use Gradle uh, to for to okay, get versions just fine. Java. Mm, com, let's call it Odafa. Okay, artifact. Uh, it's our cloud app, let's call it cloud app. Okay, yes, we want to package it as a jar file. Remember, it will be single jar, jar file at the end. We'll use Java 8. Uh, okay, so what libraries additional we would need? Well, right off the bat, of course, we need uh, Spring Web. We will need Lombok. Uh, we will, uh, what else was need? Uh, obviously, we will need web sockets. Mm. Sp okay. Yes, that's the one. And uh, time leaf. That's uh, okay. And uh, we will need also. Mm, We'll not use persistence uh, for this project, but we will use uh, web jars, but we will add them additionally. Okay, so for now, we're good to go. And we will save, oh, let's save it on desktop. You can save it anywhere you, uh, you find convenient. Okay. Okay, it's in, and now we can open it. And there we go. It created a template for our project and uh, yes we want to load all the dependencies uh, so there we go we have uh, all the that we specified we have web sockets on we don't have uh, the only thing that is missing is uh, these uh, web jars now this web jars is very convenient as a pre-compiled um, library with all the with all libraries I mean you, the difference is that you don't need to to put URLs of, the, of jQuery of bootstrap in the in the project itself you get them from uh, from maven in, in form of pre-compiled library that includes all those stuff so it's convenient also uh, Okay, so we have our template. Now you see, uh, if 
we go here, we have uh, resources, we have Java. So this is our application. Uh, well, right now it does not do, um, doesn't do anything useful, of course, because um, uh, we need to at least to have some controller. And let's let's add this controller. Follow new package controller. And let's uh, create our, I'll call it base controller. Okay, we got our uh, our object. Okay, so let's register it in the context as a controller. We will have a method that will return string mm, index. Page. Oh. For now, it will not have any parameters. And let's return uh, the name of the template, which is uh, which we will call obviously surprise surprise index. Okay, so far so good. Uh, though. We might also, yeah, we need to map it so that this will be called anytime we go to the front page. Oh, you obviously cannot do it like this, stupid. We need to return string, not byte array. Uh, okay, we have our very simple and very dumb controller. But for now, it's good enough. Uh, okay, and uh, yes, we want to update configuration, uh, reload uh, new libraries whenever we update this uh, build cradle. By the way, this build cradle, if it's if you're not familiar, it's similar to POM file in uh, Maven. Okay. So we have a controller, but we do not have template. So we'll need to create, obviously, um, template for this. Index HTML. Okay. Uh, let's also throw in some boilerplate code. And also, you see how you access them, those web jars, if you remember. This. I added this dependency, and here that's the way we uh, <coughs> we access them. WebJar jQuery. So I I, I don't need uh, some external libraries to to rely on. Okay, that's great. Uh, let's add some something like Odafa is uh, online. All right. Yeah, we need to fix up this auto complete. So, okay, we we got this, and also let's set up this application to run not by default 8080 because you know uh, Tomcat by default runs on 8080, but uh, I like it when it runs on port 80 on default. So we need to change it here, but Actually, I prefer I prefer YAML format, not uh, dot properties. So we will create application dot YAML. Well, it, should, it does the same job, but um, the, uh, it's more I like the visibility. So we we'll write server uh, port eighty, and now we, we overwrote we are overriding the default port on which this application will be running. So well, this file, we can deprecate it. Mm, okay, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and, uh, well, and build it. Gradle, clean build. Okay. Building it. It's 
So when now we have our um, our jar file, and we can run it in a very typical manner: Java build library, and that. there you go. You see, this will be our application, single jar file. Beautiful. You just copy paste it into VPS. You start it, and you're good to go. You have your uh, up your application up and running. So okay, let's let's start. Let's see if it works. Okay, it's starting. Yes, you see, Tom Car started on port eighty. And let's go into port eighty, local host. There you go. Nice. And let's not forget the very important part that uh, our version control. So we need to save our progress and commit it. First, we initiate uh, repository here. So we see what we have. So, okay, let's add them. Obviously, uh, you you can um, do it from here, I guess. With a, mm, there are some UI buttons for this purpose, but I prefer do it from in most cases command line. Uh, okay, so uh, there you go. Let's go to get graph, and there you go. this is our commit. By the way, you can see it from here. Anyway, uh, this is our commit, and this uh, all the things that we committed in our initial commit. It will be very useful later on when we will be tracking uh, our progress. Okay, so. The next, uh, let's go ahead and do, uh, do our Python project.